When doing micro shading, it's very important that you set up a sterile tray. You're gonna use a dental bib or a puppy pad over a sanitizable tray. This is gonna make sure you have a nice clean working environment. You're gonna need disposable gloves, your needles. I like to use a one RL and or a three. Okay, this gives you a little bit more of the dots and this is a little bit more for lining. Alcohol pads, clean swabs, a tink razor for cleaning up any eyebrows that are unruly, and then a sterile ink ring and a headband for your client. There's a couple other accessories that are necessary for you to perform the procedure. You're gonna want a topical numb cream. You're going to want some blue gel. You're gonna want some pigments that you have an idea that you may want to use on your client. This particular one is one of my favorites. Again, an extra disposable glove box. And then for my mapping, I like to use measurable brow templates. Um, each of these templates have a brow shape on them and I've went ahead and picked out some that are my client's favorites so that we can try them on the client and they'll go ahead and be able to have symmetrical eyebrows. And you'll notice that they have measuring tools on them to customize to your client. The next most important thing that you will actually have is your bed setup. You're gonna want the same dental bib or puppy pad over the head area where you'll be doing the work, um, a table that can recline flat, some barrier film to actually go ahead and cover up your pen or your working tool, and then you're gonna want some baby wipes. The first step when you see a client after taking their consent forms and making sure that they're a candidate for the procedure is to clean off their eyebrows with an alcohol prep pad. After you do this, you are free to apply your topical numbing agent. There's two different types of topical numbing agents. The ones that we typically use in the office for a micro shading procedure is the topical pre-numb cream, which will take the edge off when we're doing the outline procedure. Once you've made sure the client doesn't have an allergy to any lidocaine ingredients, you apply a thick layer to the area that you're gonna be treating. You then wanna cover it with a barrier to help it penetrate into the skin so that you can start the procedure. I like to use my pink barrier film and I just place it like so. I'm gonna let the client sit for about 15 to 20 minutes as the first step of the micro shading procedure is gonna be just an outline and it doesn't really hurt that bad. At that point, once the skin is open, we can apply a different numbing agent that will penetrate deep into the pores. Here's our wireless pen for the micro shading treatment. It has three settings, one, two, and three. Typically, you do most of your work on the one setting, okay? Around here, you're gonna see numbers. Those numbers represent the depth of the needle, and you want it typically at one millimeter to one and a half millimeters. Before you do your treatment, you determine which needle you're gonna use. For our procedure today, I'm gonna use the R3. That means there's three pins that stick out that will give me more of a shading effect. You pop it open, place it into your pen, and twist. Then you can adjust the depth of your pen. Turn it on and see how far it comes out. Again, you want it to come out about one millimeter deep. That's an appropriate amount. At this point, you can turn your pen off, take a piece of barrier film, and you're gonna wrap your pen so that when you're doing the procedure, there's absolutely no airborne pathogens getting onto your device. You wanna wrap it all the way up to the needle like so. And this protects your device as well as the area that you'll press for your settings. Good. So now we're gonna start the mapping process. After she's numbed, we're gonna wipe off the numbing cream and make sure she's nice and clean. I'm taking out a measuring template one that she agreed upon that she'd like to try the shape on her eyebrows. When you go to place the template, you want to line up the zero in the center with the middle of her nose. You're going to bring it up to the appropriate 
placement where her natural eyebrows sit within the design. This way you can lay it out nice and smoothly and she'll have a nice low maintenance eyebrow because all of her natural hairs sit in between the outline of the shape that's in the measuring tool. You wanna take one of your tattoo prep pencils. This one is by Tina Davies, it's one of my favorites. You wanna hold the template down and you wanna go in and just lightly fill in her eyebrow using the stencil as a guide. You wanna hold the stencil down flat so that the pencil stays purely within the outline and doesn't go out. You want crisp lines because this is gonna be your template for doing your micro shading. I like to leave the front open so that I can customize it to what the client wants. So I don't draw it in fully solid in the front so that when she looks in the mirror, she can get an idea of what it might look like once it's done. The color of the pencil has nothing to do with the color of the pigment that you're gonna choose. It's very important you tell your client that. A lot of people assume that it may match, it doesn't. I'm purely just putting something in dark that I can micro shade over so that I don't lose my shape during the procedure. It's really that simple, guys. You just go in and you're using this perfect stencil to give you a perfect shape. And then you're able to peel it off. When you peel it off, you should be left with a perfect eyebrow on both sides. And you'll be able to see where her natural hairs, the very few that don't fit in, are sticking out. And everybody's eyebrows are a little bit off. So it's very normal to have some that aren't perfect. You can go in and you can tweak it a little bit. Make sure that all your lines are nice and noticeable because you're gonna have the client at this point look in the mirror and determine if they agree upon the shape that you've chosen. Outline. You wanna make sure that you have your pen, you dip it into your pigment, you hold it for about 10 seconds and allow the pigment to soak up into the pen. You wanna pull the skin nice and tight I like to do a three point stretch so that there's no laxity when I'm doing my movements. You're gonna to wanna to start very lightly at the bottom and you're flicking your pen to create a polka dot effect on the skin. You wanna go all along the outside of what you drew on her eyebrow. And this way, you'll have your outline the entire time that you're performing the procedure. A lot of times, I like to start from the tail and work my way by flicking up onto the skin, like so. And again, you're not pressing hard. You're staying right on the top of the skin. It's very important that you are aware of the pressure that you're putting in. You're flicking lightly. You're not drawing any blood. You're purely just making a tracing of the outline that you drew on her skin. When you get to the front, you don't wanna to do too many passes or go over it too many times. And the reason is because we want the front to be light and airy when the design is done. So you wanna make sure that the front isn't as bold as say the arch and the tail. The arch and the tail are gonna be the most prominent. And how much pain are you in on a scale of one to 10? One. A one. So she's very, very comfortable. She's not in any pain. We only had the topical light of cream on maybe for about 15 minutes. Once we go over this entire brow a couple of times and open up the pores with the tip of the needle, we can go ahead in and add the blue gel, which is a special type of numbing gel that can go into broken skin and she'll feel absolutely nothing through the remainder of the procedure. You'll see that we did the outline once. It's very important you do the outline three times. If you do not go over the outline three times, when you wipe it away with a baby wipe or green soap or water, whatever you choose for your wiping method, it's gonna wipe away and you won't have your outline. You'd have to start back over with your uh, template again, okay? So if you go over it three times, you'll be sure that when you wipe it away, you have your outline and you can go ahead and finish your eyebrow. So 
So I'm gonna go ahead and go through this outline three more times. Again, leaving the front a little bit open in case I decide to microblade the front and do a combo brow or in case I just want the full ombre effect. Once we've done two passes and we've wiped away to see what's taken and what hasn't, you're gonna dip your micro swab into some pigment and press down and rub it into the design. This is gonna help the pigment get into all the little cuts and we call this masking. After, you're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. Five to eight is okay as well if their skin is dry to normal. And then you're gonna take a damp cloth, baby wipe, water wipe, and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna wipe it away. When you wipe it away, if you look up close, you're gonna start to see a very faint outline there and now this is not pencil this is purely work that i've done and you'll notice if you zoom in that it's all little polka dots it's a gradient effect so it's going to heal very soft for her because her pores are now open we're going to go ahead and we're going to add what's called blue gel the blue gel is magic <laughs> i always put a little drop like this and then i go ahead and i take my swab and i'm going to rub that in to the area, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It doesn't need to sit for long to give the effect that we're going for. And she'll be fully comfortable throughout the remainder of the treatment. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my swab, take the gel, rub the gel right into all the areas that we've been working on and let it soak in. So now we have the finished product. As you can see, the shape of the brow is there and it's nice and powdery and pixelated. I went in the front and gave her a little bit of microblading just to blend where her natural hair grows into the micro shading.